Okay, here I am working on the reactor 50cc. Uh, this is one of them that I've kind of just put up on the shelf until I oh got several of my other models uh, tested out and everything. And uh, of course, my re, uh, revolver uh, 50cc. I have just uh, cannot get the engine started. Evidently the engine that I bought uh, was a bad engine. This one's got a new DLE on it and I've already had it running. Uh, the problem with it is I've got uh, I put a spinner on it and I threw my balance way off so I bought this battery and I need to make a mount for it back in here and then I'll have to add just a little bit of weight and so I'm going to do a little bit of finish up on this today uh, I'm using two life batteries, and they both go right here. And I, I've got to make a uh, oh a little pad for them on the bottom of this airplane. They're using a thick uh, oh like a styrofoam, and with these I can slide these down in these holes and make them as a mount. But I will have to have uh, a little piece of styrofoam or uh, of this foam underneath them to hold them real well so I need to glue a little piece of foam underneath them and I need to make a little mount uh, for this battery here which is what I'm doing today so right now I'm looking for a little piece of uh, of plywood to make that mount and I've got lots of pieces here I just have to look through and find something that I think will work something I can cut down in size I keep this from all my airplanes. Uh, I've even bought kits uh, on eBay, uh, just kits, and I, I don't do the kits. Uh, but I bought the kits uh, when they sell real cheap and they're incomplete and stuff. Uh, I buy them just for the the wood and the pieces to use in the future, so they work real good. So I'm looking for something to help me with this mount. And really weight is not an issue because I'll probably have to add weight anyway. So as soon as I find something that will work for this and get a little further along, I will be back. Alright, so I've got me a little piece of foam cut here. Uh, actually a large one that's already I've already tucked down in there. And I'm taking a little bit of silicone and I dropped it down underneath there uh, where my batteries are going to sit. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to thread that little piece of foam over on top of the silicone. And I'm just going to kind of set it on there up underneath my batteries. Uh, where I want it. And the silicone uh, really works good to hold stuff in place on about anything. It won't hurt your foam. It won't hurt just about anything. And something like this where I just need a little bit of cushion underneath it. Uh, I can put that down there. Now it's gonna, it'll take about two hours to dry good but that batteries will actually hold it in place. So that's pretty good. That's about where I want it. Uh, I am going to go ahead and set a battery on it. The battery is set in here like this. Uh, to go ahead and put some pressure on it. And I haven't found the perfect thing yet. There, that'll, that'll hold that perfectly. Alright. Yeah, I haven't found the perfect thing yet, the perfect piece of wood to hold this battery in where I want it. And, uh, if you don't do a good job mounting, especially these large, heavy batteries, uh, they'll come loose. Uh, I had one, uh, come loose the other day of the little batteries, uh, the nickel metal hydride come loose in an airplane uh, a friend of mine's uh, Edge 540 it came loose in and uh, it it was really hard to get the airplane down it's uh, something you want to take a lot of time to do a good job on 
So what I'm going to do is I am going to locate some wood to make a tray. And I'm going to put a little ridge on the back of it to where it can't scoot backwards. Because the way it's going to set down on this tray, um, it won't be able to go forward. But it, it's possible that it could go backwards. And I could actually tie it with a tie. I'm actually starting to see something I haven't seen before. Uh, the way this sets down in there, I could probably go back to forward and get it really secure with a tie or two. But I would like to add a piece of wood to it. You see, that's really not bad. It's really not. I would still feel more comfortable with a piece of wood with an edge on that back, so I'm just going to have to find something that will work on that and I'll be back. Alright, well I've, I've found a piece here and I've been cutting on it here and it'll go down in here. Uh, and this one will go on the side of it. Uh, I'm kind of making it, uh, some of the little holes that they give you there match and that will help. Uh, but some of them here covered up, so I'm going to cut this little piece out. Uh, I've got a little, oh, a little hacksaw. I bought it like, uh, Home Depot or something. These are like $4. It's real handy for this small woodwork stuff. No need to get my Dremel out. But anyway, so I'm cutting this, uh, this is a, a ply plate that, uh, came with, one of my bigger planes, probably my revolver uh, that I didn't end up using on it and uh, I'm just modifying it a hair to fit where I want uh, to put my battery kind of where I want and make a little more room uh, but also have enough space I'm going to put these little uh, I've got a little bit of angle and I'm actually going to glue it to this here and there to keep it from sliding around. Like I said, I take a lot of precaution on my batteries because you can really get in trouble uh, with the heavy ones. Now the lighter ones aren't aren't as hard to do a good job mounting them because they just don't take as much holding power to hold them. Uh, but I still usually overdo it on them also. <laughs> but anyway, so here we go. This should and I'm still in the just the test fitting mode here of seeing what a what it's gonna look like. And I will probably drill a couple holes and make this where it will screw in. And then right when I get done and I get ready to mount it uh, permanently, I'll go ahead and uh At that point, I will put a little bit of 30 minute epoxy probably on it. Now I'm marking it where it comes across and it comes across these little struts here. It, uh, it hits them just a little bit. So I'm going to have to relieve a little bit of material uh, at a couple little places there where it hits. It doesn't look like very much, so probably still no need to get my Dremel out. I usually do this kind of work with my Dremel. But, uh, this is a pretty simple little deal here. Maybe I won't need it. I'm not trying not to set this up too much because that'll mess with my strength. Uh, this is some real nice fly. 
And not only that, it's going to just incorporate right in with my piece below it, fit it perfectly, so it'll be real easy to glue down and screw down, and there it is, that gives plenty of room for those. Okay. And the holes match up so I can even do my straps through the holes, which is really good. And I would really like to move one battery back on my life batteries, but I, I hate to because it'll put the weight of this battery back a little further, which I need. that kind of weight suspended on a piece of wood in time it would go down I think it's gonna be fine right there oh I could cheat a little bit I could go back to here that would work nice, I believe, right there. Yeah. Yeah, I could cheat a little bit there. That would be fine. Uh, it still wouldn't give room for that battery there, but that's no... That's really no major problem. I could actually mount, remember there's always so many different ways to mount things that don't rule anything out. Now see I could mount one of my life batteries right here. That wouldn't do bad either. That would get some of the weight back. And I mount one here. And then probably my receiver right there. I would really like to move this one back to right here, but I think that's asking a little too much. Well, I am going to work on this a little bit more and try to figure out a really good layout there. Uh, I do know that I need a fair amount of weight back there. And I believe I need just a little bit more than that battery gives. So if I could get another one of these batteries back there, that would be great. So I need to see, I need to see if I can. So I'll look that over and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I got, I mounted my battery to my plate with a little bit of foam under it. And then I, uh, I zip tied it down to the back of the plate. Uh, and then I went ahead and I put uh, medium CA underneath my board and I put my screws in it. 
Uh, I did put one more screw, and I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, that's where I'm at right now, and uh, that will allow me to move one of my batteries back on my life batteries. So I have got to go ahead and uh, put another little piece of foam, which I've got here, down right here to go under it. So I drop a little bit of my regular silicone, which, I'm, like I said, I'm starting to use quite a bit. Okay. need to take and put my little piece of foam down and this will go underneath my battery to give it a little spot to sit now I glued one in earlier for the forward position which I'm no longer going to use I'm going to go ahead and go back to this position here okay so that will give me one battery there. Okay. One battery there. Okay. And that's nothing wrong with that. Now, I could go right back where I was with my receiver. And that will give me room to put my wing bolt in. And I believe that's going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mount my receiver again. And I think I'm going to mount my receiver a little differently. Uh, High Tech gives you, with some of the receivers, this really nice little thing to wrap them in. And that's great. Uh, the only problem with that is 2.4 receivers uh, don't really have that much of a problem with uh, vibration. Because what they have a problem with is heat. So, if you wrap that up in foam, uh, <laughs> you're increasing that problem so I'm probably not I'm probably gonna mount it a little different and this is my th number three channel right here let me see okay go ahead and plug that back into number three and figure out a little bit better way to mount this Now I had all my wires marked uh, for when I was putting this model together. I really don't need that anymore and I it doesn't really matter if you leave them on there but uh, it would actually help if you ever pull stuff apart. But I just think they look tacky and I'm going to take them off. <laughs> uh, I just, I like my installation to look real clean and it doesn't make a lot of difference, but it does to me. So I'm going to go ahead and take all those little wire markers off. And I've left them on there too long, so they're a little sticky, but it won't hurt anything. Okay. Now, I would probably just, uh, a little piece of this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a little piece of this, just a hair wider. Uh, to give it a little bit of vibration protection, but I'm from what I've read it doesn't really need it that much Okay Now this one I can put it upside down 
And I can go like this, which is really different, but it looks like it's going to work really good. Uh, see, this stuff they give you has a kind of a Velcro sticky spot on it. <laughs> that works great. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull my batteries out of the way. And this should mount right here. Let me see, I'll do my wires later. I've really got a perfect spot for that. do a good job tying my wires up. These are, uh, I call it a wiring masterpiece, uh, which is just kind of a play on words. Uh, the bottom line is you've got wires coming from every direction going everywhere and uh, you have to make it all work fairly well and it's it's hard but I think I can get this way back there I did a pretty good job on it okay so if I go ahead and thread this through I should be able to come back and grab it my hemos this is going to be kind of a hard place to do it but let me see if I can I'll get it through this side that's not a problem just getting it back up and getting it around the receiver in some kind of fashion when I can barely even get to it done similar things in the past and got by with them, we'll see. As long as I can get a hold of the other side, somehow, it looks like I can. So it kind of looks like I can, so I'm going to go ahead and work on this, and I'll be back. Okay, I've got my receiver kind of where I want it, and I've got a one piece of Velcro on it. Uh, now I actually have to tie it in a little more than that. Now it's not that hard to hold a receiver, but I want it really good. But Anyway, back in a tight area where I'm trying, I'm going to go ahead and put a zip tie on it also. And I take my zip ties and you twirl them uh, around your finger and you pull them tight. And if you do that, and you can even hold it for a second, and you can even put a crook on the end by flipping it over. A lot of times you can put them in a really tight area and grab the other end, which is what I'm going to try to do to get a better hold on the receiver here. What I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to stick it down until I can see the other end, this other side, which is going to be really hard to do on this one because it's just really back in a bad area. But with a little moving it around and stuff, I should be able to do it. So I'll get that done and I'll be back. Alright, I got my two life batteries in here and secured very well. And I I went around them with some Velcro and stuff from different angles uh, to kind of overdo it. Uh, they are removable uh, with just a little bit of Velcro pulled loose. And uh, I got my receiver in. And I got my battery for my ignition in. 
Uh, now I'm starting to hook up some of my wires and make them lay where I want them to lay. Uh, to make them lay out of the way and stuff. Which is kind of, can be kind of tricky. Yeah. Now see, I can use Velcro on top of this other to make things lay where I want them to lay. Now my, my Dean's leads, they don't need to be anywhere there. I, I just use them for charging. Uh, see. So anyway, I'm trying to make all my wires lay right. And I'm going through some of my wiring that I had done before. And I'm taking my clips off and I'm replacing them with uh, zip ties because I'm running out of clips and uh, they don't really, you don't have to use them on the permanent stuff. You might as well go ahead and use these on the permanent stuff or uh, even the shrink wrap works really well. Uh, these are pretty handy and cheap and that's what I use a lot of the time. Uh, now I don't ever just leave them just plugged in. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of planes that have flown for years that have those just laying around uh, in the fuselage, but I don't do it in mine. I don't take that chance. Okay, now. Let me tie some of these up out of the way. Trying to find a good place to tie some of this stuff up so it won't just be laying around. Oh, see, there's a piece of Velcro that I, I always almost always leave my velcro really long uh, <laughs> on my pieces and is what that does it is it lets you see this or not it lets you go ahead and take some of your wires and put put them up underneath them and make them you can hold them kind of where you want them to be with your velcro which is really handy Most of that's not too bad. Okay, now let me see. My ignition is what I'm going to hook up next. It's my ignition battery. That one's that one right there. Okay. This is my ignition. And I see I've got a i got a clip in there. I need to reroute this one anyway if I can get to it. This one goes to the data port. And this is my uh, telemetry station. I will just run it underneath my gas lines here. There's no reason for it to be above them. Doesn't really matter that much, but uh, again, everything you can do on your details a little better, do it. Got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Just barely long enough. Okay. Now, put a zip tie on it. And I'm getting pretty close to getting this plane uh, back in a, a good state. Uh, this one just was not ready for its maiden. Uh, I had a few details to work out on it. Uh, 
this airplane was uh, quite a bit of work and uh, is what I did on it is I put it up for a while and then I got it back out and then I put it up for a while again uh, I've got several planes that I've built lately and if you try to do eight or ten of them at once and work the details out of them you won't do a good job on any of them so that's what I do is I just pick a few and I usually take my smaller airplanes because I can work the bugs out of them faster and I kind of get them worked out and I set some of my larger projects some of my bigger airplanes like this one up and uh, come back to them alright now this one right here is the ignition So, in this particular battery, the ignition battery is a 4.8. Uh, everything I've read says that that's just, I've been running 6 volt, but everything I've read says that uh, uh, the DLE ignitions only really use uh, 5.3 volts. And uh, as far as I can tell, that's even the new ignition. Uh, the older ignition showed 4.8 to 6 volt. And the newer ones show 4.8 to 8.4. But on their website it says that they, uh, if you use life batteries or if you use LiPos, that you would have to use a regulator. And see, a uh, life battery is only 6.6 uh, .6 volt. So that doesn't really make that much sense, but you just, you kind of have to follow what they say, because I'd hate to damage my equipment. So, uh, I just went ahead and went with a nickel metal instead of going with a regulator. And uh, from what I understand, <coughs> 4.8 works great. Now, since I put the spinner on the front of this airplane, it threw my balance way off uh, and made it uh, nose heavy. So, since it was nose heavy, I uh, needed to add some weight back here. Okay, so if I need to add weight, and then I also needed a good battery for my ignition, instead of just adding just raw weight, why not... Put, uh, I put a sub C 4.83600 battery. Uh, should work perfect. Okay, now let's see here. I've got, I think I see the other one here. Okay, there's an end. Figure out what's what on this. Okay, well here's one end. And there's the other one. Okay, okay. I'm starting to see it. And that one's going to be fairly short. I don't know if it's a problem or not. It wouldn't have been short if I'd have turned it the other way. But it will help hold some of these out of the way, so maybe I'm not sure if it's a problem. Now this one will go to those two. 
And that'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get in a little extension for that one. Uh, which I should have one. Uh, something a little already made up here. Okay. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Oh, it's a smaller gauge wire. I don't want to do that. Okay. Well, I might just make one. Surprised I don't have one, but I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and make one small lead real quick, and I've already covered this many times, so I'm not going to go over it again. I'm going to go ahead and make uh, a little extension, probably a, probably like a four inch for that, and I'll get that done, and I will be back in a minute. Okay, I made a little extension here, and this is for my uh, ignition switch to my battery. Way well, I say that, what is it to? Oh, it's to one of my, it's to my receiver. Uh, my receiver, I ran a single. And then on my, uh, for my servos, I ran a double to increase the, it's just basically a Y harness. Uh, but that'll increase the voltage there, uh, possibly. It'll re well, it'll probably increase the amperage is what it'll increase. But anyway, so here this one is going to be permanently hooked. I'm going to go ahead and put a zip tie on it. This is the one to my uh, receiver. See, I ran my receiver and then my servos, uh, the power, separately, which... Uh, on a high-tech, they give you that option, which is really great. Uh, on a plane that's going to pull some amperage, uh, that'll help you out. That way you can split them up. Okay, and there that one is. Okay. That makes, it makes this front battery my RX battery. And that's where I use my clip, because that way I can take this battery in and out when I want. Okay, there's that one. Okay, now this one will be to my servos and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread it through. Trying to kind of make my wires lay down here. I want them to in the process. Again, hemostats are worth their weight in gold and stuff like this. Okay. Now this one uh, will be my, my servo battery and everything. And it goes into a double 
to increase my amperage. And I also used a 15 inch amp switch in this one. Okay. Boy, that one feels really loose. Anyway, I need to find one more clip here. Which I did have a few. And there's one right there. Okay. Alright, now I need to make all my wires lay the way I want them to lay. And uh, possibly use this Velcro to hold them down. So. Everything needs to go back over here. Okay. Now these. They won't really matter. I don't believe they can lay right there. Actually, I'm gonna tie them back over just for the fun of it. Uh, just because I can. <laughs> uh, again, using my velcro uh, to use it to work like wire ties and uh, it works great okay now everything else goes over the top here again using my velcro okay and one more time using my velcro now that should let me put one more under here Uh, that pretty well holds everything where I want it. With my Velcro out of the way of stuff. Where it can't move around that much. And these right here are for my ailerons. My wings. And after I hook them, I'll set them right down there in that groove. And that'll make them lay right there. So that works. Uh... Not sure how well you can see this. I'm going to go ahead and try to do a little bit of a close up uh, to show you what I came up with. Let me take the camera off the stand here. Okay. Now, see if I can get in here to show you what I've been working on. Right there it is. Okay. So, my receiver's back in there, to the right. Uh, there's my sub-C battery. There is my two life batteries. Uh, one switch is up here. One switch is on this side. And, uh, that should be it. Now I need to go ahead and put the wings and everything on the plane and see how it balances out. And, uh, probably run it for a minute. So, let me get to that point and I'll be back.